1080p. So far, let me know what you think in terms of the video quality and the audio quality. So, the front camera, and I'm not a huge fan of the face brightening on the Huawei, but the difference in how well bright backgrounds come out is staggering. I've talked before about how the Note has issues with HDR on the front camera, and this may well be a pretty good example. Lighter areas often disappear while it tries to at least light your face properly, so I was almost expecting the Huawei to be better, but not by this much. There are some cases where I do think Samsung portrays the face better, but generally this one goes to Huawei. Okay, but what about the rear camera? A standard photo taken on default settings on both phones looks pretty different. Huawei has a more sharpened look to it, the sky looks more defined, but really it's personal preference as to which images you prefer. Huawei has toned down the oversaturation they used to have on photos, and in most cases now, colours are more saturated on the Note. But the true benefits of the Mate 20 Pro really start to emerge with its flexibility. The phone is fitted with a new ultra-wide camera, capable of capturing about as much as the eye can see. And this changes things. Landscapes become immediately more dramatic, and the amount of information you can now fit into one image is leagues ahead of Samsung. A lot of the time when you're taking a photo of a really nice view, you have to prioritise what you're capturing. You might have to cut off the taller buildings, or miss out on the ground altogether. Well, with an ultra-wide camera, that compromises much less. And it's a bit of a double-edged blade. It doesn't just allow you to capture much further, but also something I was surprised by can bring you much closer. Most phones need to be over 5 centimeters away from their subject to focus, but Huawei claims that their device can be as close as 2.5 centimeters, which is the difference between taking a photo of a leaf and taking a photo of the texture of a leaf. Rear video is a bit of a mixed bag. Samsung can record 4K at 60 frames per second, a luxury that the Mate doesn't have. But when you're walking out and about, to me, what is more important is stabilization. And while the Note 9s is already well above average, the Mate is next level. I've always been a little sceptical about AI in phones. It seems a lot of the time like a marketing gimmick, but looking at 4K video on the Mate 20 Pro, something is working. Even with optical image stabilization, the Note 9 just isn't as good as the AI stabilization on the 20 Pro. At 1080p, both phones are much smoother, and I'd say the gap between them isn't as noticeable, but still present. Now, that ultrawide also comes into video, and it's no less handy here. You can capture much more of the scene in a more dynamic way than just with a photo. The Mate also lets you take portrait mode video. I'll let that sink in for a minute. It digitally recreates the bokeh effect of a DSLR, and while it obviously has got a way to go, it does work better than I thought it would. This is complemented by portrait colour, probably my favourite new mode of this camera, which can isolate people close to the camera and only colour them. And somehow it seems to also pretty much perfectly identify the clothes they are wearing and colour those too. Both phones can also record bursts of 960fps super slow motion, but for this I would give it to Samsung, the picture is clearer and the slow motion more realistic. The Note 9, like most 2018 flagships, is blessed with a 2x telephoto lens, which is great because you can get twice as close to objects with no detail loss. But the Mate 20 Pro has three times, and the difference is more than it sounds. If we set both devices to their maximum zoom, this is what an object in the distance might look like on each. You've probably heard about the Note 9's variable aperture, which allows it to get much better low light shots than most other phones, and this feature is no joke, it definitely works, but Night Mode has made a return with the Mate 20 Pro, and there is still nothing like it. You hold the phone steady for 4 seconds while it takes the best parts of the image at multiple exposures and then meshes them together. The disadvantage of this is that sometimes fast moving objects like people appear blurred because of this 4 second long capture time. But you could argue this looks artistic, or that other phones are going to blur the people anyway in low light. I'll leave that up to you. The advantages though are slightly less disputable. Really bright areas are controlled, colours are preserved, and dark areas are lit up as if you just introduced a floodlight to your image. And when you combine night mode with the ultra wide lens, it's like nothing you've seen on a phone before.
You've probably heard of the Mate 20 Pro's standout 40 megapixel camera. Well, by default, it actually operates at 10 megapixel because a lot of its features just don't work at 40. When you're shooting at 10 megapixel, the Note 9's 12 megapixel camera slightly edges it out in detail. But then again, if you did want to take a detailed photo, switch over to the 40 megapixel camera on the Mate and it'll absolutely blitz the Note 9. Both devices can also take portrait mode shots, and while I think the blur on the Samsung is a little more organic, it tends to blow out the highlights and forces you closer to your subject, so often you'll find yourself wanting to take a step back. Alright, so having seen the comparison, which phone do you think has the better camera? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you do pre-order the phone before 26th of October, you can also claim a free Huawei Watch GT and a wireless charger, and that's all